All right, let's get this fly tied. To get started, we have a size 14 dry fly hook made by Orvis called their tactical dry fly hook. But any dry fly hook will suffice. We have an 8 aught light olive uni thread for our thread. For the tail, some of my favorite materials I'm currently using for just about all my tails, dry fly snips, is a Cote de Leon CDL for short. We're going to strip off about five or six fibers. And this is going to be a medium pardo, but again, whatever you have available is going to work. We're going to get about you know, five, six fibers, and we're going to go slightly longer than just the shank of the hook. We have our pinch in technique we're using our right hand, which is our dominant side if you're a right handed dominant. Pinch, measure that off, and then the thread is already in our tie-in point. Place that right on top of our tie-in point, switch hands, using that pinch technique, coming around, making one loop, and then two wraps, in total, three. Now if you get a little too long like I did there, there's not too many wraps where it's you can't slide it through. We can pull a little tighter. Now we can cinch that down. There's our tail. Now for the dubbing, we have an, a variety of options. The dubbing I, I've been using on a lot of my dry flies is a Trout Hunter CDC Light Olive for my blueing olives. But remembering, any dubbing is going to work. This stuff is just chopped up CDC feathers, but just has just a, a cool little look to it. Definitely a, a beefed up version of traditional dubbing. Takes a little more work to get used to, to kind of get these fibers to stick onto the thread. But we'll make it work. I think it definitely adds a little flotation too, to your dry fly. We're gonna take enough dubbing here where we're just making a few wraps. Covering that shank, we're gonna go about halfway up, maybe just slightly beyond the halfway mark. Okay, about halfway. Any excess, remember, don't wrap. We do need to re try to reduce bulk as much as possible. Okay, lay that in there. So we have our tail, we have our body. Now for the wing we're going to use, this is a polypropylene. It's a waterphobic yarn. Some of this stuff is called Parapost, another substitute. It's basically a poly yarn that's treated with a water flotation or a, uh, a floatant before it's sold on the shelves. But we're gonna take a section of this poly yarn and we're gonna split this in half. For this size 14, this is all we need, about half of your yarn. Just take your time, pull out those fibers. And unlike traditional dry flies, what I like about the bars Visadon is just the simplicity. Instead of having tying your wings perpendicular and then splitting them so you have like a split wing, we're going to tie this in like a parachute post. Right on top, do one loop. And even with an A dot, just as long as you know how to use your thread tension correctly, and trust me, I blow up, I break a lot of threads off by kind of going beyond the limits. It's amazing how much pressure you can apply with an A dot and how you can get this material to bind down nice and tight. So often we have a lot of problems with just making too loose of a wrap and then when you go to pull this material, it pulls out. So just work, keep on working on that thread tension, getting that material, whatever you're tying in, to be knocked, locked in and secure. Now, we're gonna tie this like a parachute post. We're gonna hold the wing upright. We're gonna do a couple wraps around the base of the thread. So instead of winding around the hook shank, to get this material to kinda, you can see how it split. We're gonna get this, we're gonna make a couple loose wraps around and then cinch, a couple loose wraps. I'm just gonna, not too far up, just enough to kinda get that material to kinda pull together. So we have one, fairly uniform wing going straight up. The hackle that we're gonna be tying in, it's a dark done. 
gonna tie this in. We're gonna for about a size 14, maybe even a 12. I, I don't mind an oversized hackle. The hackle in this situation is a little oversized. We can always trim it flush with the hook point. And it's not a bad idea when you're trying to use this for like an indicator fly to be a little wider. We're tying this down with the stem. Remember all these hackles will have a curvature. So when I tie this in at the stem, the hackle fibers are gonna be angling down towards the hook. A couple good wraps right there. And remembering this is a black wing. Often you can tie this in a variety of different colors, usually high vis, fluorescent pinks, yellows, something's gonna be a little easier to see, but this is a fly tied for a specific condition, and that is when you're usually encountering glare. And that color black, believe it or not, is going to stand out a lot better for you, in my opinion, than a lot of your fluorescent colors. We're just going to take a little bit more dubbing. We're going to create a very thin base layer of dubbing on the shank to create a landing pad, if you will, for our hackle. You could just take the hackle right now and wind it towards the eye, but this is uh, something I've been doing since I read George Harvey's book on fly tying, that you know when you try to take a bare stem and you wrap it on the hook shank, the stem is slippery, the hook shank can be slippery, and often the fibers will actually slide off the side. So if you just take a thin base layer of dubbing, lay that on the hook shank, now when you wrap your hackle on the forward position, it's going to give it something to bite down, almost like a landing pad, if you will. A little too much excess, pull off the excess. That CDC W you can see has sometimes those little wild little fibers that are sticking out. Again, I'm not too worried. I'm not. I'm not trying trying to tie a perfect fly for my eyes. I'm trying to catch, trying to tie a fly that's going to catch fish. All right. So now what we're going to do with our thread, now that it's wrapped right behind the eye, ready and in position, so once we wind our hackle forward up to the thread, we have our tie-in point, which is going to be right there. We're going to take our hackle pliers. We're going to orient this. Again, just take your time. We want the curvature going towards the tail, so they're splaying back. Take a few moments. Make sure when you start making those wraps, you have that nice perpendicular alignment. Now this is a dry fly, but this is going to be more of an indicator fly again. We're going to be using this as a dry fly to suspend a lighter weight nymph. So I have no problems adding a few additional hackles here, meaning the more hackle, better flotation. So this is going to be a beefed up version. If you're fishing this solely or tying this solely for a dry fly to use nothing but as a dry fly without trying to drop a small nymph off of, you can definitely use far less winds of hackle. But for this fly, we're beefing this up a little bit. And the poly is getting a little out of control right here. This is what happens. This, okay. One wrap right next to the other as we start wrapping forward. We're going to wind this right up to the thread. Again, look how beefed up this is, but this is going to float really nice and high. Go up to our thread, come from behind, use that little zigzag approach so we don't pull too many of those fibers down. Come from behind again, just two wraps. trim. This is where it's important. There's only two wraps right now holding the hackle down. So we're going to take our scissors. Any of this, these fibers that are sticking on the front side we can trim. But if I was to bump or move this hackle or move this bobbin, chances are it's going to come undone. The hackle pliers are going to come undone. So wind this bobbin as tight as possible. Keep things as nice and tight. Pull those fibers back. Make a few wraps up. Now take our whip finish. We can whip finish two, three, and then I always try to do two whip finishes. One just for an added security blanket. 
Okay. Double whip finish. You can see these hackles again. This is definitely a little too long for most, but I'm going to trim this flush. And what's nice about having slightly oversized hackle for this style of fly is it's going to create a wider base. And this wing, when I cut it, it's going to be a little higher than normal because remembering in low light or in glare, often you may want to lower your profile looking more level on the same height as the as the water itself and having a wing that's a little higher or positioned higher off the water is going to be easier to see. So I'm going to take this poly, pull tight, create a little tension and then make a quick little snip. Now this wing is a little tall. We can actually trim this down maybe a little bit but not too much. But having these larger fibers and trimming this down here with the fibers going a little further off to the side than the traditional hackle is going to create a little bit more stability allowing us to have a higher wing post and giving us a better vision or a better view of our dry fly in lower light conditions or during glare. So right there is just a variation of the John Barr Visidun with a dark wing designed for fishing low light or glare conditions. So once we have our bars visit done, our dry fly, now we need to find a fly to tie off the bend. And maybe it's early in the day, fish are not showing lots of activity, and those fish are just still feeding you know, closer to stream bottom, maybe not right on stream bottom, but they're still looking up a little bit, but not they're not fully engaged on the, on the surface. So this is where we're gonna fish a weighted nymph. You can fish an unweighted nymph with a split shot, tied off the bend off your Visidon, or in this case, we're just gonna tie a Pertagon, a little blooming olive Pertagon style nymph. This has a slotted bead, this is a jig hook. These jig hooks have the front section that's bent. This one's at a 45, some are at 90. Either way, whenever you're fishing a jig style hook, you're gonna need a slotted tungsten bead, uh, unlike the beads that we tied in class, but this bead has a slot that is designed to slide over that bend on the front section to kind of lock it into place. Once you have that bead in place, we're going to tie in our tail. And simplifying most of your gear and your equipment, you don't need to go crazy. You don't need to have an exact shade of dubbing or an exact shade of thread for every fly that you're tying. As an example, this tail of material that we're tying in, this is a Coke de Leon. This is the same tailing material that we tied in for our bars visit done. I'm still using the same 8 dot diameter thread that we use for our bar visit done as well. So trying to streamline a lot of your materials will make it a lot easier for you, saving some money and then also just reducing clutter which is something all fly tires are absolutely notorious for carrying way too much crap than what they actually need. So we tie in our tail about the same length as a shank. Now we're going to tie in this hand strip quill. Now, you can use thread, you can use other materials. This is just, it's definitely a little more expensive, but this hand, stri hand strip quill is just awesome materials because when you wrap this, you're going to create a nice little band. This has, on the side of the quill, has like a dark edge. And when you wrap it, it really creates a nice, good looking segmentation. So once we have that secured, we take our thread, we wrap it forward. Now, when you wrap this thread, making sure, when you look at this hook shank, we are going to be laying this quill on top of the hook shank. If there's any valleys, unevenness, that is, with our thread, this quill is going to slide. So just making sure that you have a nice, smooth landing strip. We're going to take a pair of pliers. Now, this material is incredibly brittle, so we, as you're wrapping, forward. It just broke off there. We'll tie this in one more time. As an example. Incredibly brittle. There we go. Now we're just going to start wrapping. Avoiding 
that hook point. And we're making one wrap right in front of the next. In that dark edge, as you're wrapping, you're gonna see just a really nice, tight, segmented look. And you go, again, you go through different stages in your fly tying career. Sometimes you're gonna get, get to this point where you might wanna tie a really realistic imitation, something that looks exactly like the insect that you're fishing for or trying to imitate, and that's great. And at this point in my life right now, with things, get, you know, things get busier in your life, you try to spend a little bit more time on the water rather than behind the vise, I tend to tie really simple patterns. And this protagon pattern is one of those patterns which catches a lot of fish and you can tie it in virtually less than a minute or two once you have all your ducks lined up, meaning once you have all the materials lined up, very easy pattern. You could actually bang these things out in less than a minute. There it is, that really nice tight segmented look. We're gonna take our whip finish one, two, do one more whip finish just as a backup. Now this peacock quill, as you saw, is fairly brittle. So this is why we're gonna add a little UV resin. On top of this, we're gonna just use a Loon UV fly finish clear, but you can use any material that's similar. We're gonna lay this right on top. Not only is this going to add durability, but I really believe this adds a level of slickness. It, de it basically smooths out this pattern, decreases any friction as this flies in the water, and it just allows your flies to drop and slice quickly down to stream bottom. Just kind of lay that out, kind of even it out, just like when you're if you're using epoxy, you can kind of roll this as you're before as you're getting your light in place. You can kind of just roll this back and forth, making sure you don't get any uneven bumps. And as you're rotating it, you can turn on the light. You can hit it with the light as you're rotating it. Turn it off. And right there is just a simple yet incredibly effective pattern for a blooming olive nymph, or they could take it for whatever nymph you, they might think it is. But simplicity, small proportions, and the idea here is that you want this fly to be as slick as possible to cut down to that water surface to get to the bottom where the fish are feeding on a regular basis. But this fly in combination with that Bars Visidon is a great combination, dry dropper combination, I love to use on a lot of our local limestone and spring creeks whenever there is a blooming olive hatch occurring. Next pattern we're going to tie is the Puff Daddy. This is just a soft tackle variation. Instead of using hen backs, hen saddles, pheasant rump, and whatnot for the collar, we're going to use a CDC feather. This was a pattern I came across while fishing the South Holston River a number of years ago. It's just, again, the concept, everything I tie these days is pretty simple. They're more suggestive, even though we are using a color scheme here that can imitate a blooming olive. It's just simple patterns that are more suggestive that can imitate a wide range of insects. The way you do this, and what I want you to think about when you're tying flies, again, is the concept of a chef versus a cook. When you look online the recipes, you're going to see a wide range of recipes for the same pattern. Like if you look on line for the Puff Daddy, you're gonna see lots of tweaks and variations. The idea is I want you to think about being a chef rather than a cook. Cooks follow the recipe to a T. Chefs kinda of mix and match and kinda of do as they feel uh, is, is best or what is available to them at the time. So when you're tying at home, especially during these odd times, you may not be able to get access to the exact material that this per person on YouTube or whatnot is providing you so just be flexible adapt you can make the body of this you can do this with just thread or you can do it with thread and a ultra wire rib or in this case we're just going to tie this with 
another peacock quill, a la peacock quill. We're going to tie that quill in and we're going to wind this thread forward. This is a size 18 hook with a 8 dot olive thread, the same materials that we were using for the other patterns. Again, trying to consolidate all your materials so you don't need to have 50 shades of dubbing, 50 shades of thread. You can basically tie a handful of flies using virtually the same materials with a slight variation sometimes. Now we have our peacock quill in. Now we're going to take, because this is such a short stem, I'll take our hackle pliers. This is very brittle material. See if we can break this one off like we did with the Pertagon. Just like we did, yep, exactly. When you're doing, when you're working with these quills, one of the things, if you're finding troubles of breaking and brittle, one thing I didn't do is you can soak this in water. It's going to soften up. It's going to make it a little more pliable. But we're going to try to be very gentle here and just do this dry out of the pack. Make a wrap here. And avoiding that hook point. Very brittle materials. If you come in contact with a hook point, game over. And what I like about this quill, as we did with the Pertagon, it has a nice edge. It gives the fly a nice segmented look. Definitely overkill. Does the fish actually see this now? But this is just something I do for myself. I just I love the look of these quills. I come from behind here and just tie this off. Now remembering, yep, I just sliced that right off, how brittle that is. To give this just a little durability, we're gonna take a little, we're gonna take some UV resin. Just hit the top section. And it's so important when you're doing the UV resin, you stay away from the spot where you're gonna be wrapping the thread. This only, this resin only goes on where you're no longer wrapping materials on there. Otherwise, if you put it on the section where you're gonna be wrapping your thread or you're winding your CDC, it's going to slip and slide. Okay, there's our body. Now, for the collar, we're gonna take a CDC feather, and we're gonna tie in tip first. Pull some of those fibers back, stroke those fibers back, so you have a, a bare stem to tie in. We're gonna do our pinch technique right here. Wrap forward. Now, make a few more wraps, secure that nice and tight. Now with our hackle pliers, we're gonna do the same thing as we did with our visit done. We're gonna kinda of angle this, and again, remember the CDC feathers, are, these stems are a little, a little more brittle than your typ typical hackle, so a little less pressure. Right now we're just gonna twist and turn so those fibers are perpendicular. And once we start making our touching wraps, like we are here, I'm gonna to try to make about three full wraps. Each wrap, there's one, each wrap is gonna go directly in front of the last. If you need to pulse these last fibers back, you can do so. There's two, one wrap right in front of the last, Pull those fibers back. There's three. And there's gonna be enough for another fly here. The CDC is not cheap. I come from behind. A little zigzag. So let me just let that bobbin fall. Pull down. Come one more from behind. A little zigzag. Let that bobbin fall nice and smooth. Now, just in case disaster does strike and that thread does slip, I don't cut the stem off until I'm done finishing off that fly. Because if the thread does come off and I still have the stem to hold on to with my hackle pliers, I still can salvage this fly. Now we're gonna just build a small thread dam just between the eye. Here, remember never trying to avoid crowding the eye of the fly, something I am guilty of quite often. We're gonna do two whip finishes. One, two, three. And just one more as a backup. 
two, three. There we go. Trim. Tag there. And then with the stem, kind of pull the stem out. Separate it from the fibers that we just laid down. Take your scissors. Pop that off. Okay. Now, we're going to just take that, these fibers, pull them back towards the bend, and we're going to just cut this under tension just slightly beyond the bend. And right there is the Puff Daddy. This is one that have, has become probably another one of my favorite. They're all favorite flies of mine, as you'll find out here. But what's nice about this fly, especially with this little hard body, it's going to help sit that fly more in the water column, just a little bit of extra mass. You can fish this as a dry fly. You can fish this in tandem behind the bar visit done. Because because this fly is often difficult to see, tying this in combination with a more visible dry fly, anytime you are watching this rig unfold or drift in the water column, you're going to focus your main focus is on the bar visit done. But anytime you see a fish rise in the vicinity of that bar's visit done, there's a good chance. The fish is eating this little emerger just several inches right on or below the surface of the water. So there you have it. This is the Puff Daddy pattern. Emerger.